you now say this is not only an alien spaceship, but it's nuclear powered? Why are you saying that? Well, thanks for having me. First, I should say that uh, if the light that we observe from this object is reflection of sunlight, its size needs to be bigger than Manhattan Island, 20 kilometers or so. And uh, there isn't enough rocky material in interstellar space to deliver a rock of that size uh, earlier than 10,000 years from now. So the question is, what is it? And uh, its orbit, the trajectory that it takes, is aligned with the plane of the planets around the sun to within five degrees. That's a chance of one in 500. And moreover, the what does that tell you? What does that trajectory tell you? Well, it, it indicates that perhaps it was designed by some intelligence. That's something this, steering it. Not necessarily, but uh, the trajectory itself was chosen to be such that this object will pass close to Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, the chance of that happening, the, the timing of its arrival is perfect for that, to, uh, with a likelihood of one in 20,000. And so the, I'm just saying we should observe it. It doesn't look like uh, it's a, a random occurrence. Uh, you know, the size, the, the trajectory, the fact that it comes so close to three planets in our solar system, and actually it comes closest to the sun on, the, on October 29th, when uh, the Earth would be on the other side of the sun. We won't be able to observe it. Uh, I'm analyzing right now the best image we have of it. Uh, we don't have any evidence for gas around it uh, in uh, the spectrum that was taken, but we do see some fuzz, some uh, halo of uh, uh, scattered light around it. In yeah, front we're looking of at the image now. What does that tell you, that halo of light around it? Right. So usually for comets, you see a cometary tail trailing the objects from behind because it's being pushed by uh, the radiation from the sun. The dust particles are pushed to be behind, to lag behind the object. In this case, what we are seeing is a, a glow in front of the object. And uh, I'm analyzing first, I, I, if it's, this is caused by dust, the amount of dust is very little. You know, over six months, the amount of dust that will be ablated from the object to generate this glow is just less than a millimeter thick. So it's, it could be just dirt on a solid surface of such an object. And the question is, what is the nature of this object? Of course, as it gets closer to the sun, we would get a better view of it. Uh, and uh, we could use spacecraft like Juno next to Jupiter. I spoke about it with Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna. She called me on the phone and uh, I gave her an update about the object and she encouraged uh, in a formal letter, she wrote to uh, the head of NASA, uh, Sean Duffy, the uh, Secretary of Transportation, to encouraging NASA to use Juno, which is next to Jupiter, to come close to 3 Atlas when uh, it will get there uh, on March 16th, uh, 2026. So do you uh, know, do you know, could gather some data, take some pictures of this thing? Yes, but also a camera that is next to Mars, because this object will come very close to Mars as well on October 3rd, 2025, uh, and uh, it will be within a distance of 29 million kilometers from uh, Mars. And there is a half a meter camera that is currently used to uh, watch uh, Mars itself. But I encourage the team that operates it to look at 3i Atlas, and they can get a, a pixel resolution of 30 kilometers uh, around this object. So we can get a better right. sense of what, what the nucleus of this object and, is. And super quick, Avi, is there any reason to be concerned about this? Yeah, you never know um, if, if what kind of intent it has. And I think we should, in the future, have some international organization that uh, decides how to respond to a visitor to our backyard, because that visitor may enter through the front door.